Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and what a week it has been this week. There's been talk of war, societal violence here in the United States, and just rage in general has been going up. The weather has been going bonkers, and later on in a little bit I'm going to tell you about some crazy things that have happened right here at the homestead related to uh, weather. Uh, I think the biggest story this week has been the uh, new Omicron variant of COVID that's come out of South Africa, though. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but first I want to remind you guys that tonight at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be releasing the next episode in the Alien Invasion series. If you're not familiar with the Alien Invasion series. It's an, a series that I've done on here on the channel where it has kind of an imaginary alien invasion, but it's really about learning bushcraft skills, homesteading skills, preparedness skills, uh, in kind of that fun context of like, oh, there's an alien invasion, so let's learn how to make a fire, like that kind of thing. If you're not familiar with the series, here's a link to it. You can check it out. And if you've been watching it, tonight at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, the next episode is going to be released here on the channel. But let's talk a little bit about some of the news coming out this week. Uh, again, I think the big story was the, the Omicron variant of uh, COVID that's emerged out of Africa. And it's really, it's interesting to me what's going on around that. Right out of the gate, uh, you know, there are huge claims being made uh, about it. One of the big ones is this looks like it is highly resistant to the vaccines. It can just blow right through the vaccines. So, of course, the answer from people was that we need to get more people vaccinated with these vaccines that don't work for this variant so that when the variant comes through, the vaccines can fail to block it. I, I don't know. I think people are not thinking straight. I think people are scared from all the crazy fear-mongering media attention on all this stuff. And they are just, it's almost like people are sleep deprived, except it's like instead of being sleep deprived, it's like, nor normalcy deprived like you know if you, you keep someone from sleeping for a certain there's a tree just fell down big tree we're going to talk about that in a little bit um we you know you, you sleep deprived people for a certain number of days and they just start losing their mind and i think the same's got to be due with like uh, uh the same has to be true with like normal people and like going out to restaurants and theaters you like keep keep them out of their normal lives for a couple of months and they just they lose it they can't like form a logical thought in their head. So anyway, there's this new variant uh, out and right out of the gate, uh, some people from the WHO were comparing it to Ebola, where I don't, I don't know where you get off comparing it to Ebola, one of the worst diseases that humans know about. And COVID has killed lots of people, very unfortunately, but you know, you don't put those two diseases on the same table together. Uh, you know, one is tremendously dangerous and the other one, for most of us is tremendously non-dangerous. I mean, it is specifically with kids who are now being vaccinated, they have literally, per the official numbers, a one in a million chance of dying from COVID if they get COVID. They, they, they have way more of a chance of dying in a car crash on their way to get their vaccine than they do you know, from the COVID itself. So I mean, people's perceptions of you know, various um, dangers is, really, really skewed. And it's being helped by, you know, people from the WHO saying, oh, this new form of COVID, it might be like Ebola. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been kind of crazy. Fortunately, the actual information <laughs> on, uh, on Omicron is fairly uh, optimistic, actually. It seems like it might be a very mild form of COVID, which is for most people a mild disease. Again, not for all people. And, uh, you know, while I myself am not vaccinated, I do think that people who have asthma or, uh, you know, are certainly like getting up there in years over 65 or are like really overweight or potentially all of these things together. I think that the, uh, the potential dangers of the vaccine uh, are nowhere near uh, as dangerous to people as the potential dangers of, you know, having those kind of body conditions and getting COVID. So I think for a lot of people, it makes sense to get the vaccine, but for like kids and people who are healthy and middle-aged, it's just, it's, I, personally, I think it's a way of pharma companies making more money. That, that doesn't mean that I, you know, vaccines are a bad idea. Again, I think they're a very good idea for certain groups of people. You know, that's what you do with medicine. You focus the medicine where it's needed. Uh, you know, the whole idea of antibiotic resistant, uh, you know, uh, um, germs coming out is because people took medicine and they just smeared it everywhere. You know, you focus the medicine where you need it. Um, at least that, that used to be the conventional wisdom. Uh, but anyway, Omicron variant might be a good thing because uh, if it is mild, and I stress if, we don't know, you know, the demographics in a lot of the countries where it was coming from skew differently in terms of age and, uh, you know, a lot of the countries in the rest of the world. So we're going to see uh, what happens in the rest of the world. So this is a big if, but if it skews uh, towards being mild, it could be kind of a good thing because getting back to vaccines, the way a vaccine works is that you take a disabled uh, form of a virus, a weakened form of the virus, you put it into people's bodies, that gives their bodies kind of a chance to practice on that with a lower risk environment. So then when people 
you know, uh, see that by the real virus in real life, that the actual virus gets into their body, their body's reaction uh, to kind of anthropomorphize it is kind of like, <laughs> I have seen you before and I know exactly what to do with you. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. Um, you, you give your body some practice and some training so it doesn't get caught off guard when it sees the real thing. And the Omicron variant, again, if it is a mild form of COVID, could work along those similar lines. And allegedly it spreads super, super uh, effectively uh, you know, amongst people. It just it spreads like crazy. Um, and that could kind of be a good thing. If you have a mild form of this disease spreading all around the world, um, it could give people practice because uh, you know, coronaviruses have been around forever. It's the novelty of this novelty, uh, novel coronavirus that is the problem. Uh, and if you just give your body a little practice with it, make it so it's not new anymore, as long as your body can survive that initial uh, exposure to it, you know, you've got that training in there and you should be much better off the second time that your body encounters it. So it could be a good thing. Again, it's a big if, we don't know, don't you know, uh, call all your friends and say, we gotta get a, an Omicron party together here, you know? No, it, we, we don't have enough information for that at this point. But if it, if it turns out to be mild, it, it could potentially be a good thing. In fact, in, this is a theory that I have, and I'm, I'm, this isn't something I believe, this isn't something that I think is even probably true, but it's just interesting, it's interesting to think about, and, and you can tell me if you think it's interesting as well. Um, we know that people like to help each other. Most of the people in the world want to help each other. There are certain people that are you know, very self-centered, and you know, they're psychopathic people and evil people in the world, that, that, that exists, but the vast majority of people want to help each other. Uh, we also know that people are smart. We know that people can manipulate viruses. That's what people do in viro virology labs. They practice on, this is not controversial at all. This is done all the time. It's totally out in the open. People manipulate viruses, see if they can make them weaker, see if they can make them stronger, see if they can make them more spready, see if they can make them less spready. You know, people are trying to learn so that, you know, they can try to, well, I guess, come up with vaccines for viruses and things like that, um, which has not been super successful during this <laughs> particular uh, incarnation of a virus pandemic. But that's the idea, you know, you learn about uh, viruses and, you know, there's valid criticisms about whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. Some people suggest, and I think it's a perfectly reasonable theory that, you know, COVID might have actually escaped out of a lab. I don't know whether that's true or not true. It certainly is possible. Um, but people definitely know how to manipulate viruses. So if people have the desire to help other people and people have the ability to manipulate viruses, um, one of the interesting things in fact, possibly the most interesting thing about the Omicron variant is its genetic sequence suggests that it was plucked out of the world a couple of years ago, right at the beginning of the, uh, the coronavirus uh, outbreak, you know, the COVID outbreak. It was plucked out of the world and isolated. Now, the going theory is that it was isolated inside of like some immunocompromised person in Africa somewhere. Someone had like HIV and the virus kind of stayed in their body and was just kind of isolated and did its own thing. And I, I, you know, I'm not a geneticist enough to know whether that's true or not true or possible or not possible. That's the going theory. Um, that's one way of isolating a virus. Another way of isolating a virus is isolating in a laboratory. And again, that's done all the time and people test and do experiments on viruses all the time in laboratories. Now, if there was some uh, group of scientists or a single scientist uh, that saw that there was a world pandemic starting and they know about manipulating viruses and they know how to pluck a virus out of the world and put it in their lab and they know how to manipulate that virus such that they could make a form of it that is more mild and they know how to manipulate that virus to make a form of it that spreads really well all those things are true all those things are possible but if that happened if there was um, some altruistic scientist that wanted to do that and they did pluck an early form of COVID out of the world and changed it in a way where it was more mild, it wasn't going to hurt people, and it would spread really easily, that would be a pretty darn good way of trying to combat a global pandemic. And if someone did that, I would suggest it would look exactly like this. Um, in fact, all the way down to the idea that we don't have anyone taking credit for it. Like someone saying, oh, don't worry, this is my form of the virus, you know, you guys can get it, it will actually, you know, be helpful to you. We wouldn't have that happening because one of the problems with uh, this type of genetic um, uh, manipulation is that it is controversial and for good reason. Uh, you know, one of the things here in the United States people are thinking about doing uh, is with climate change, malaria is starting to come up into Florida and now that it's in the United States, now malaria is like a real problem because <laughs> it's like, you know, 
uh, American citizens are dying of malaria. So now people are, want to take it seriously. Um, so one of the things people are thinking about doing is creating genetically modified mosquitoes, which already exist, they've already done this, and releasing them into the wild. Uh, and these genetically modified mosquito, mosquitoes are resistant to uh, malaria. And uh, they have kind of engineered them so they can't catch the malaria. I think it's a protozoa. Uh, I say it's not a, like a bacteria or a virus, it's a, it's a protozoa, I believe, what malaria is. Um, so they are genetically resistant to this. And uh, they've been engineered in a way where their genes are very spready. And I don't know how, how I, I don't know specifically, I'm not a geneticist, how that is achieved, but they've made it such that uh, if they were released into the wild population, those genes would tend to dominate the area and the mosquitoes that can carry malaria, malaria would eventually go extinct. Um, that sounds like a no-brainer. Yeah, awesome. Why, why not do that? Well, it's controversial because of like, well, it's like, like Jurassic Park, you know, the unintended consequences. You know, you, you mess with nature and, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. And once the genie's out of the bottle or the cat's out of the bag or Pandora's box is opened or whatever other kind of metaphors you want to use, um, you know, you can't, you can't put it back in at that point. And that's why it's controversial. So um, if someone was going to do this, I think it would be highly likely that they would do it secretly. They would not advertise that they were doing it, and they might not even take credit for it, at least not for years after the fact. So if someone did that, this is kind of exactly what it would look like. It would look like the virus had been plucked out of the world and isolated for an extended period of time, and then just suddenly reemerges in a way where it's weakened and spreads really easily, and nobody's taking credit for it. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm not saying that's probable. Uh, I'm just saying it's possible. It's very possible that that could be what we're looking at. If you know better, let me know in the comments below. So anyway, that was a huge story, and we just need more information on it. We don't know. I, again, don't plan your COVID parties. We don't know that this is necessarily going to be a good thing. could be a bad thing. Uh, we do know that the prevailing wisdom is just like, you know, get vaccinated. That's the answer for everything. Um, so anyway, the, the, the beat goes on. Uh, other things going on are weather related. Uh, we have been having uh, today and yesterday an enormous amount of wind. Uh, actually, the entire week has been super windy here. We've had trees getting torn down, big trees. In fact, one of the uh, trees that got torn down recently, it was actually a really great tree because it was blocking my 10 o'clock in the morning winter sun. It was on my, my hit list of trees that I wanted to myself take down, but it was so big, I was a little apprehensive about taking it down. Well, the wind did it for me. I mean, th this tree at the base, you could, can't even get your arms around it. Uh, uh, probably about 60 feet up in the air, tore in half, and it just got thrown into the forest. All this debris it couldn't have, couldn't have happened better if I designed it myself. We've had a tremendous amount of wind, and we've had some crazy weather here. Uh, uh, today, at the time of this recording, it is December the 3rd. Last night, we had uh, torrential downpours and lightning storms in December. Now, I know people in the rest of the world, you know, like if you're down in that Florida where they're thinking about releasing those mosquitoes, you know, maybe lightning storms in December are normal for you up in december we don't have it's not like ho 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 merry christmas you don't hear those two sounds next to each other but you do now you know we have a, a changing world at the moment you know um at the moment you know for the next for the foreseeable future uh you know we've uh it's interesting what's happening right now and the more that you see it happening in the world you know I, i've been talking about the idea of you know, we should take climate change seriously. This is something that's really happening. You know, we should try to, you know, prevent it. I think that's off the table at this point. We should try to prevent it or get ready for it. I've been talking about this stuff for years. And, you know, it, going through it, it's not, it doesn't, it's not one of those things where it's like vindication. I feel so great that I was right. You know, it is, it's, it's unsettling having these things happen around you because, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just the beginning that we're seeing right now. And, um, <sighs> this shit is real and it's actually coming and you know that's why we prep uh so yeah yeah we had some crazy weather here as well so yeah it's been a crazy week in news and real life and again like i said this is just the tip of the iceberg we're just seeing the beginnings of it so yeah it's good uh good uh, good reason to keep prepping so hey if you are interested in the alien invasion series next one's coming up i've talked for so long it's probably coming up in just 10 minutes at this point um but uh yeah um this season, I know it's been different for a lot of you guys. I wanted to make this series, uh, this season, um, be a little less of the kind of like the excitement of the beginning of a uh, disaster event. That was the first season was kind of the excitement of these things happening. I wanted the second season to feel more like um, you know what happens 
after uh, you know event ha event happens, kind of like what I was talking about. Um, you know, with climate change, you know, when it first starts happening, you're like, like, wow, wildfires, this is, this is crazy. And then after a while, you're like, you know, those wildfires are kind of more of a problem than they are an excitement. And, uh, you know, I just wish I could go back to normal. And that's why I've tried to make the second season feel more like, is that kind of like, uh, you know, the, the grinding slog of just kind of dealing with things after they've happened. And I know it's not as exciting for some people, but uh, I hope you guys are appreciating what I'm trying to do with the, se the, the series. I'm trying to keep it real, and we're coming up to the ending of the second season. Uh, we've got a few more episodes left, and uh, the ending of the second season is going to live up to that, or live down to that, uh, to that reality of what a lot of these, uh, you know, situations are like. I wonder if that can help you to guess how this whole thing's gonna gonna wrap up in the end. But um, you know, we're getting there, and I, I appreciate you guys' uh, feedback on it. And uh, let's just keep at it. Let's just keep at getting ready for things because man, the wind is just not letting up around here. Fortunately, we haven't had any trees hit the house. Um, well, I cut all the trees that could hit the house, but like I didn't cut all the trees that could hit my cars or my woodsheds or any of that kind of stuff. So every morning we have a uh, crazy windstorm. I'm out there making sure all the structures are uh, still there. We do have a pretty, pretty big tree across our driveway though, so before we go anywhere we have to hit that. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.